If you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you must build a solid financial home. And building that solid financial home means building a solid financial foundation on the cement and permanence of life insurance. Well, today I'll be breaking down the two major styles of life insurance that every aspiring first generation cash flow millionaire must establish in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad, happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. In today's episode, you're going to get access to an exclusive inside look of our live training here that we do on Saturday mornings for our life insurance agents here at the Money Smart Movement headquarters, which by the way is my day job running a national life insurance agency. Every Tuesday night and Saturday mornings, we actually host now live in-person trainings to empower and equip our life insurance agents to serve their communities. And for those of you that want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, I want to make sure you have access to a little flavor of this training that we do in order to increase your knowledge of life insurance to make sure you are establishing long-term generational wealth. Now, whether you are a life insurance agent or not, or just simply somebody cruising around to increase their knowledge about life insurance and your financial literacy, exposing yourself to this type of financial education will change your life for the better as it has done for mine. What you're about to watch is a live training that I do simplify and break down the two major styles of life insurance. And just to remind you, make sure you stick around to the end of this video so therefore I can redirect you to other videos to increase and improve your level of financial education, increasing your financial literacy. Without further ado, bust out your notebooks. Let's get right into it. Let's check this out. We good so far? Yeah. Yeah. Got track us far? Okay. Life insurance. Life insurance can be broken down into three major categories with PHP, okay? You guys have a life insurance license, right? Yes. So first category is term insurance. Let me, let me explain to you the value of term insurance. It's the cheapest premium with the highest benefit in case something were to happen to you. Okay? You are basically, in this context, you're renting insurance. Because you'll never own it. But you'll have it for a, for a period of time. Okay? For example, 10 years... 20 years, 30 years, and when some co certain companies we do business with, it can be broken down to like seven years, 11 years, 13 years, 15 years, 17 years. So the, the period is what you rent insurance for, for the least amount of premium, for the most amount of benefit. Now here's the thing. How many of you guys ever rented an apartment before? Okay? When you're done renting it, do you own anything? No. So for a one year lease, two year lease, right? However long you've been there, once you, the last month you pay rent is the last month you get to stay there. But when you leave, you own Nothing. But in the meantime, you're able to live there. You're able to raise your family. You're able to take your kids to good schools. You're able to provide shelter, right? Holidays, experiences with your family. But basically, you're rented insurance, okay? So at PHP, we offer this style through the multiple carriers that we do business with. The flip side to this term insurance is what now they add out is what they call ROP term. ROP stands for? Return of premium. Here's the cool part. How many guys have ever had car insurance? You should have, right? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> right? You, oh, you got car insurance? Raise your hand if you got car insurance. Okay, good. All right, Amen, I'm not going to look around. No, 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 no judgment. Somebody riding dirty up in here, right? Okay. <laughs> Who's got car insurance? Not looking. <laughs> okay. Imagine you've been with Allstate or State Farm or American, whomever, Liberty Mutual, whoever, right? And uh, you never got into an accident in the last three, four, five years. It says, congratulations, Maurice Hansberry. Congratulations, Anna Rivera. Congratulations, Johanna Morpori. You've never gotten to an accident in three, four, five years. We will refund you all of your premiums the last three, four, five years you've been with us because you've never gotten to an accident. What would you say? Hell yeah. yeah. Right? However, there's no such thing in the, because that's a different style of insurance. That's called property and casualty insurance, called, or otherwise known as PNC. Property and casualty insurance. We discussed in previous weeks that the compensation for property and casualty insurance is very insignificant. Right? For like a $100 a month car insurance policy, your commission is either a fee from the, from the broker, here's 15 bucks, or, or here's $45 for selling a $100 policy. 
versus selling a $100 life insurance policy, what's your commission as a brand new associate? Okay, as a brand new associate, uh, you're at $480 commission for a $100 uh, policy. So term, so term insurance is what you're going to use to rent. So here, here's the thing, when I, when I first started, uh, uh, my policies, I needed a certain amount of death benefit, but I could not afford it based on the permits. I will talk about permit here in a second. So just like anything else, I rented, and eventually I can own, because you can, uh, based on the carrier that you do business with, you can potentially flip a policy from a term to a perm. Okay, you just gotta requalify for your health. Okay, to make sure nothing changed between the time you bought it at term, no heart attack, stroke, or anything like happened in a certain time frame. So therefore you can convert it into a policy that you own in terms of permanent. Okay, perm. So, for my li raise your hands my licensed associates, your licensed associates. How hard is it to sell term insurance? I mean, it's... Assuming that you have trust, relatability with your client, they'll most likely buy from me because this is based on price. So here's a cool thing about selling life insurance. Unlike selling real estate or like selling a car or selling baseball cards or, or selling a tangible product. If they don't have enough money to buy your tangible product, they just can't be your customer because they need the money. Right? If, if, uh, you're, you sell, if you sell a car, you sell a Honda Accord, they don't have the 30,000 bucks. Well, can you give it to me for 15? No. It's 30,000 uh, bucks. I want to buy this half million dollar house. I only got 250 though. That's all I qualify for. What does the real estate agent say? Well, let's find you a different neighborhood. Right? right? That's more appropriate for your budget. Right, Richard? <laughs> right? Right? Let's go back to the hood. <laughs> right? By the way, the way I got my real estate and I got my life insurance is rent to own. Okay, when I was a broke uh, single dad, coming up in the insurance business, I had my three kids, I was able to live in a very nice, well-to-do neighborhood because I walked in there with a negotiation with a landlord and I said, listen, a nice house, it was the most expensive block with the cheapest house, it's called a knockdown house. Why do they call it a knockdown house? Because people usually buy that type of house, knock it down and build up a McMansion, which the neighbors across the street did. They can't remember this house, right? Rudy Roseman, Wendy, you remember that house. How many of you guys remember my little house? Melissa, you remember that house, right? George Lowe, right? Yeah. It was a shock to me what happens uh, raising kids in my neighborhood versus kids in that neighborhood. Okay, very well-to-do neighborhood. I was probably the only, I, was, I called myself the, uh, the only, uh, uh, myself and another block down the street was an Indian couple. Another block down the street was an African-American couple. We called ourselves the Brown District. <laughs> Welcome to the Brown District. As soon as you cross 47th Street, property values drop. <laughs> I'm just messing around, man. I'm just, right? We, we, and we get to see each other at the block parties. Because we're the ones there coming to the block party with chicken adobo. <laughs> right? Right? Chicken curry. Right? We're the only people right, in the neighborhood doing that type of stuff. Anyway, I got into that neighborhood because I rented to own. The same thing you can do with life insurance. If you're a single parent like I was, and you need a million dollars, two million dollars of coverage just in case something were to happen to you, as long as you got trust with your, your uh, uh, as long as you have trust and uh, credibility with your agent or you're an agent, get a policy that you can afford. Okay. Sadly, what happened to uh, DMX yesterday? Mm. Passed away. Okay. And that's what, by the way, this is why you need to take care of your health, because the way he lived his lifestyle. He could not get a life insurance policy, okay? Four kids with his wife, six with other women. I mean, I'm, I'm just adding up, right? But that's his, that's his right? Uh, uh, four, four, five, four closed homes, okay? His finances were a mess. Uh, Jenna, can you show that link uh, I was sharing? So just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean you get the right insurance advice, financial guidance, okay? So back, back to this. Back to this, what we're, what we're looking at, okay? Term and perm. Perm, people often say, by the way, you gotta be ready for your, 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 your detractors. Well, why would you sell perm? Permanent insurance, what's permanent insurance? Universal life, whole life, index universal life, 
G U L. Okay, Smart U L. It's, it's the, some version of U L's, right? Uh, 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 final expense, which is a whole life. Okay, permanent, 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 permanent policy made to pay for you till the day you die. These policies today, so these term policies last for 10, 20, 30 years. One of these policies designed to to uh, to to uh, lapse. Hundred uh, hundred twenty one years old, based on Anico and uh, and NLG. Hundred twenty one years old. Imagine being hundred twenty years old. Who's 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 it? Uh, who just died yesterday? Royal family, Prince uh, Philip. He just was, or, he, he just died last night this morning. Right. He's born, uh, born 1921. Died 2021. Almost hit 100 years old. When he was born in 1921, do you think he was going to think about living to 100 years old? So, okay, at the count of three, shout out the year you were born. You ready? The year you were born, count it on, no, on three. One, two, three. You young, you youngins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Whatever year you were born, whatever year you were born, shout out a hundred years after that number. You ready? Shout out a hundred years after that number. After the year you were born. One, two, three. <laughs> Think, think about that. Think about that. That year that you just shouted, according to the act, the fancy people that know math and health, called actuaries, they think you're going to live to that date. Because the policy is going until 121. Now, some of you may check out at 90. Some of you guys may check out at 80. Some of you guys may check out 105. Some of you guys may check out 110. I mean, there's a World War II veteran. It's 108, 109 years old. World War II. So you guys, based on your DNA, you don't know. The good Lord might say, we're going to keep you on earth for a long time. You ain't come up here for a minute. <laughs> you need to get your life together. <laughs> right? Okay, so my point is permanent insurance is designed to be there for the permanent permanence of your life. It's designed to pay you when you check out, whenever that is up to 121 years old. This term. Now, this is a little bit more expensive, right? Yes, sir. This is a little bit more expensive. Why? Now, how many guys have ever owned a property? Condo, townhouse, two flat, three flat, single family home, right? Was the mortgage property, what's P-I-T-I, property or principal interest, Taxes and insurance, P-I-T-I, that's the, right? Principal and interest, taxes and insurance, which is nothing you never had to worry about as a renter. You just paid rent. But when you own a home, you have a mortgage. Now you got to account for the borrowing of that, which is the mortgage. You got to pay back the principal with interest in addition to the taxes of that, of that property, in addition to the insurance for that home. But isn't it interesting that even the banks know insurance is important? Before you close on a house, you have to have homeowners. homeowner's insurance policy. Okay? And certain mortgages, you have something called PMI. Right? Private mortgage insurance. And that, that, that PMI doesn't go to your family. It goes to the bank. Depends on what type of loan. You have a conforming loan, non-conforming loan based on your mortgages. It goes back to the bank. It doesn't go to your family. And that's, by the way, opportunity for you to sell mortgage insurance to your potential clients that own property. Okay? So when you're looking at permanent insurance, term insurance, permanent insurance, designed to stay with you for the rest of your life, and you own it now, do you pay a little bit more in premium then? Yeah. So this is a little bit higher premium, a little bit lower benefit. So oftentimes you're going to get online, people say, I'd rather just buy term and invest the difference. In other words, let's say this term, this term insurance policy costs 250 bucks a month based on our, based on our uh, uh, PowerPoints and our BOMs, right? Yeah. Somebody says the, par uh, the policy is 250 bucks a month, but I can divide that into two different, pol the two different strategies by term, which is by this policy, for 50 bucks a month for more coverage and invest the $20 into a index fund or Bitcoin, 
which is everything, the, the crypto craze, Dogecoin, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever they got going on, okay? By the way, side note on, on, on cryptocurrency, there's people gonna make money on that? Oh, of course. But is that where you bet your mama's money at? No. So, as a whole, right? The amount of money you can invest in what they call speculative type of stuff. And by the way, I'm not giving you financial advice, I'm just gonna give you guidance as a friend. If you're gonna invest in something speculative, invest money as if you don't see it again. Okay? I can afford to lose this money. Whatever that percentage is above, above, above your, about your investments, that's the amount you put inside crypto. Well, Matt, you know, um, Elon Musk just uh, bought a billion dollars. What's a billion dollars to Elon Musk? Right. <laughs> Guy's a trillionaire. What's one billion dollars? It's one percent. One percent. <laughs> How would you like to have that problem? Why? A trillionaire, what's 10% of a trillion? A hundred billion. One percent of one trillion then is one billion. So he put one percent of his assets in crypto. And then he's maneuvering the market with his tweets. So you got to be careful about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, the biggest trolls I get on my YouTube channel, I know I'm seeing you guys right now because you're watching this on YouTube. The biggest <laughs> trolls I get for you guys is you trying to sell me your crypto with your daggone bots. Yeah. <laughs> fake people. If you got to sell your product with fake people, I don't know if I should buy it. I want to buy. I don't want to buy. It with, I don't want to buy it from a robot. I want to buy it from a human, daggone being. That's what life insurance does. People say, "Was well, a bot going to replace an insurance agent?" No. You, you know why? Because Dwayne Wade would never bought business from a robot. You don't. You don't buy. Listen, a, 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 a robot can't empathize how much your family means to you, your children, your your, your wife, the, the 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 difficulty of your parents immigrating from a different country. And that's why you need to create a financial estate using insurance. And by the way, is this guaranteed? Is, is insurance guaranteed? Yeah. You pay the premium, something happens to you, they're guaranteed to pay you. Yes? Yeah. Assuming that you didn't lie in your application. Yeah. What about crypto? Is that guaranteed? No. Ask the guy, listen, you guys are full of crap, blah, 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 this, this, this. Listen, I've been doing this for 22 years. There's always been some form of distraction away from insurance. Sure. Buy this dot-com website. Buy this stock, buy this mutual fund, buy this piece of real estate, buy this mortgage, buy this gold, buy this sports card. But the thing that's always maintained, steady Eddie, which is what I think you want to base your income on. Do you want your income going like this? Or do you want your income going like this? Steady Eddie and explosive. Yes, sir. Boom. That has been my, that is, that is compounding. That has been my income the last 22 years. Salesperson, it's flat. But as soon as I got to building and building an agency from the, these type of kinds, boom, my income went like this. It, and by the way, it's crazy to think what this business pays you once you figure this stuff, stuff out. Such an easy business. It's such, did I say simple? No. Nope. This is an easy business. Why is it not simple? Because this is based on your ability to be emotionally stable mm. and, work eth and consistent with your work ethic. But once you're stable with your emotions and you're stable with your work ethic, this is a very, very simple mm. business. When was the last time I had to worry about a shortage of life insurance? <laughs> we're in, we're in uh, Mo, Moritomo, Morimoto, Japanese. Man, we had some crazy uh, steak and sushi last night, two nights ago. We had fatty tuna, toro. You guys ever have fatty tuna, toro? Any, any sushi heads there? <laughs> we had uh, A5 Wagyu beef. It's, it's $150 per ounce with a three ounce minimum. <laughs> We'll have 10, please. We'll have 10. By the way, I want, I want you guys to get to the point where you don't stop worrying about paying for food. How many guys, how many guys uh, uh, don't experience the best food offerings in life or the best organic stuff, best good food for you because you're worried about how much it costs? That's what 2021 is going to do for you guys. If you, if you figure this stuff out, 2020 is going to be the year you stop worrying about money. Okay. Back to this. Did you realize, though, the same... Term insurance cost is the same cost with inside a permanent policy. They just, they just charge you 20, 50 bucks a month. Why? It's called forced discipline. The insurance company says, well, we'll get, we're willing to give you life insurance for a higher cost, but in exchange, we'll also help you build cash value, which builds equity inside your policy at a later date, mm -hmm. of which you can withdraw without paying a dime in tax, according to section 7702 of the IRS code. Mm -hmm. That's the exchange here with your property. Let's say about a piece of real estate right now. If I sell it next year, assuming there's no appreciation in the real estate market, do you get money out of your property? 
You just paid glorified rent, didn't you? Yeah. So, but let's say this. Let's say buy a piece of property, P-I-T-I, all this stuff, and the real estate market doesn't grow in 10 years. And you sold, you, let's say you buy a house for 250, you sold it 10 years for 250. Right? You probably lost money, right, Rashad? You probably lost money because all the repairs, all these other things, maintenance of the house, AC, HVAC, all that stuff, plumbing, electricity. By the way, home ownership, pain in the ass. Right? It's easier to cut a rent check. Hey, landlord, fix your shit. Right? It's, easy, it's so much easier to do that. Which, by the way, makes you think, is a house really an asset? Or do you want to be able to just pick up and go? Now, did I say real estate investment is not an investment asset? Of course not. Because I love to own a 20, 30, 40 unit building. Right? Or vice versa. I'd rather build an SVP. Hey! Thank you, bro. Right? right? Instead, of, instead of taking the time to go site visit, make sure my contracts are ripping me off, I'd rather, hey, you guys want me to do a conference call? <laughs> yeah, man. Right? Instead of worrying about squatters, hey, want me to make some top 25 phone calls for you guys? So much easier. This is so much easier. Real estate, real people. Right, right. Real estate, uh, 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 illiquid asset, uh, or, 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 or a brick and mortar asset, okay? Real people, man, you don't know what somebody's gonna do. You don't know the heart of a champion that somebody that you recruit into your organization. So back to permanent insurance. This here, in exchange over time, is guaranteed to increase in value. And people often say, trash value, this, this, and that. Well, they don't understand the different option A and option B of the death benefit mm -hmm. and inclusion of the cash value in that death benefit based on what you choose on that policy, which is option A or option B. And by the way, can you change it? Yeah. Can't say option A, give me the death benefit and cash value. So oftentimes the argument is, well, trash value is because when you die, the insurance companies keeps your money. They keep the equity that you built up inside the policy. That's wrong if you choose option B. Can you always flip it back to option A? Yeah. And by the way, if you don't know, if you don't know this language, welcome to Financial Literacy Month. In your notes saying, I need to study more about this language, good book for you guys to read, Missed Fortune 101. Absolutely. Okay? Or we just heard, The Laser Fund. Mm -hmm. Okay? Boom! All right, so consider yourself one step closer, increasing your financial literacy and education and empowerment towards becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. You see, after 22 years of being inside this industry, I've seen everything from dot-com companies, websites, real estate, mortgage, build-ups and meltdowns, Dogecoin, cryptocurrencies, I've seen it all, Forex, you name it. And can I just share something with you just to be completely open and transparent? Have I probably missed out on more chances to make more money? Sure, but with the ups and downs, of the other financial returns I just, just mentioned, where I could have made a lot more money. There is the one home of money that even the banks keep to keep their money safe. And what is that? It's the insurance industry. I mean, look what happens to banks if they default, go under receivership. Who do their account holders go to make sure they get their money back? It's the FDIC, which stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Huh? but you didn't even know what FDIC stood for. Now, if you want a deeper dive into the subject of life insurance, check out these couple of videos right here. Number one, how millionaires build their wealth using life insurance. And a second video here is why more millionaires today are buying more life insurance now than ever. It's like the insurance companies are daring you to buy life insurance, things are so cheap. That being said, I love knowing your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. Drop them in the comment section below, even share this with somebody that you love and care about, that somebody's also looking to master the rules of the money game. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy here in another episode of the Seven Fear Squad. If you haven't done so already, make sure you like our business page on Facebook. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue smart, continue smart, and be money smart today.